Two of the people who contributed a, a very important concept to, uh, I think, our understanding of modern society were uh, Hegel and Karl Marx uh, with the concept of alienation. Uh, brilliantly captured with Ed Edvard Munch's uh, famous painting, The Scream. Um, and quite honestly, uh, while there are advantages to Zoom meetings and team meetings, the thought that we are going to now substitute real human social interaction with endless Zoom meetings and team meetings for time immemorial in terms of how we uh, interact uh, to discuss the future of our society uh, is the definition of alienation. Uh, we'll have a nation of uh, uh, people uh, mimicking the scream of Edward, Edvard Munch's uh, painting. Uh, it is a horrible vista, Count Corla, uh, uh, and I find it fundamentally objectionable. Uh, so yes, uh, it is an unfortunate reality that in the midst of COVID, uh, that we have to uh, live endlessly on Zoom, uh, and on team meetings, uh, and even in a world without COVID, yes, there would be times and uses, absolutely, we've learned something from uh, this technology, but the idea that it would permanently replace uh, the actual meeting of human beings uh, at public meetings, and God knows where it'll end then in terms of education and all sorts of other absolutely vital human interaction is frankly a terrifying borderline dystopian uh, vista. Uh, so I absolutely uh, object uh, to this. And of course that, that relates to something else that's been alluded to about how I object to the fact that we're having to deal with all of these things together. I mean there are things in here that will be modestly progressive. And I don't want to get in the way of them, but I really fundamentally object to that. The idea that there's going to be a permanent option for local authorities to replace public meetings in the context of development plans. And it will set a precedent that goes way beyond those public meetings. There's absolutely not a shadow of a doubt about it. And really it strikes fundamentally at uh, what we are as human beings. And I mean that in, in a re very serious way. Alienation is a reality, uh, and uh, it has very, very detrimental effects on human well-being. Uh, and so we need to tread very carefully, and just slipping in, uh, in a, a bill that has three or four different disconnected elements, at the last minute, uh, on the second last evening before Christmas, you know, it's just not good practice. Right? It's not good practice, uh, and it is a very, very poor way to deal with very, very serious uh, issues uh, about how human beings come together to influence the future of their society. And that is what uh, 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 development plans are about, as, as emasculated indeed uh, as local authorities have, been, have become uh, because of policy uh, 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 policy. Uh, moves to centralise uh, control over planning and all sorts of things. This is one uh, power, if you like, local authorities have, uh, and it is an opportunity for ordinary people to uh, actually get involved. Uh, and them coming together and interacting in a live uh, environment is absolutely, uh, is absolutely critical. So I have a real dilemma, to be honest, because I don't want to get in the way of this bill, but I really object to that. And I know, uh, I think there are amendments in that address that, because to be honest, when you're a small party and we don't even have representation on the Housing Committee, we're scrambling to even get our heads around what's in this bill. Because there's something on residential tenancies, critically important, there's something on uh, the issue I've just discussed, the development plans, democracy and public participation in development plans, critical issue, uh, and there's something on substitute consent, which I'll get to in a minute, absolutely critical issue when you think about the aftermath of Derry Bryan uh, and the failure uh, in terms of building a wind farm to actually comply with the EIA directives in terms of public consultation, and in that case, the result is a mountain falls down and slides into a river. Uh, with disastrous environmental, uh, environmental consequences. 
Uh, so to put the three of these bills, I mean, again, I just can't believe the Greens are involved in this stuff. Uh, who would have been the people who would have seen themselves as the guardians uh, of good planning and so on, and this gets rammed in uh, at the last moment. It really, really annoys me. Um, on the issue of residential tenancies, I just want to say, say this, right? I mean, uh, and I just want to alert the minister to this. He's gone out now. Uh, yes, okay, so people who fall into arrears directly as a result of COVID, and if they can prove that, won't be evicted during this emergency period. Okay, well, I won't object to that, but to be honest, uh, this is so inadequate, it's just uh, sickening. And I just want to alert the, the minister, uh, if he's there, to the fact I was in the PRTB this week with tenants uh, who are now facing their fourth eviction attempt at the hands of vulture funds, ruthless vulture funds. I really, they just disgust me, these people, uh, who are using the window occasioned by the lifting of level five restrictions, where there's a pause button put on evictions, uh, there could be level five again in January, but as soon as the uh, eviction ban, which is occasioned by the level five restrictions is lifted, they are in ruthlessly to evict, uh, in this case, eight tenants. They've already driven the previous 12 out through nasty tactics, just grinding down the tenants, trying to exploit loopholes in the residential uh, tenancies at grounds of sale, grounds of refurbishment, grounds this, that and the other, for ordinary people who have always paid their rent, working people who pay their rent and now they're facing eviction and they're in the RTB and they will probably lose this time uh, because these guys have found their way around the Tyrrellstown uh, amendment by evicting eight people instead of ten, which is what they really want to do, and then they move on to the other uh, uh, two that are left in six months' time, which the law allows. And the government allows this to happen, and it allows to happen in coming up to Christmas and in the midst of a pandemic. That is what should be in legislation this week. Uh, putting an absolute pause on those kind, of, uh, those kind of evictions, but it's not there. Instead, we have a token measure, which, yes, we'll support, but frankly, will do very little for people who face that kind of ruthless activity. And I know there's another example of the same thing in Rat Mines happened this week, uh, where the same vulture funds were on pause because of the eviction ban occasioned by COVID, and they have moved in and have actually evicted the tenants up in uh, Rat Mines. Lastly, on uh, substitute, uh, substitute uh, consent. And again, the measures seem to be sort of broadly, but at the absolute minimum, of trying to deal with uh, this, you know, I mean, what do we call substitute consent? It's retention, right? It's retention for developments uh, that didn't really comply with environmental uh, directives and the need for proper public uh, consultation and environmental impact assessment in terms of what these developments, uh, uh, these developments uh, can do. And I think we need to go a hell of a lot further in cutting out that abuse than is being done in this, and that's what it is, it's an abuse. Retention, yes, there may be a place for us. Substitute consent, maybe occasionally in absolutely exceptional circumstances, but in general, it is an abuse of the planning process. Uh, and it is systematically abused uh, by developers uh, trying to get around the planning process. And often, as we have seen in the case of Derry Bryan, uh, we're seeing it again in Donegal. And God knows we may see it on the Kish Bank and the Codling Bank with the Dublin Array uh, as well. Uh, where they're building in too close with this, uh, with this array and will there be proper impact assessment about what they will do to the Kish Bank, uh, to the biodiversity, marine diversity and so on that exists out on that bank. Uh, so these are very, very serious issues. I won't get in the way of these measures that marginally marginally uh, improve the situation from what it was. And I see Deputy Bryn and O'Callaghan have a good amendment uh, in which I hope, uh, hope passes. But really, this is not a good way to do business. And there is one measure, which I'll just repeat again, is this business of permanent uh, options to have online and not physical public meetings in terms of development plans. That is not on, right? And that needs to be withdrawn by the government.